Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. A few days ago, I received this comment on one of my very old videos uh, from someone by the name Gregorio Paradis from the US and he was quite appreciative of the video. And his question was on behalf of his daughter. He says, my daughter wants help with the Y equals function. And so far, nobody was able to tell her if this model can handle that. And so I asked him to email the question. And in this particular video, Gregorio, I'm going to answer your question. So this is RTI Inspire CX2. This is the CAS version, but the same thing should work even in the non-CAS version. We're just going to go ahead and add a calculator page. And what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go ahead and define the function here, okay? And in order to define the function, we can just write f of x and then press control along with the key to the right-hand side of nine, which is known as the template key. So control and the template key will give you this symbol and you can enter your function. You asked for a linear function. So I'm just going to enter the linear function as 4x plus 1, hit enter, and they're done. Done means it's gone into the memory of the calculator. Now we're going to add a graph page. So the graph page can be added by pressing control and dock. Okay, you can add any page, but we're going to have the graph page to generate the graph of the function. And here also, if you wanted, you could have entered the function, but there are advantages of having defined it on the calculator page, which I shall come to in a minute. Okay, so on the graph page, you don't have to enter the function again because this is linked. Okay, it's 1.2, 1.1 1, 1 .1 and 1.2 within the same problem, dynamically linked. Okay, this is not there. This particular feature is not there in the in the model that you are using the TI-84. I don't think this dynamic link thing is there. Okay, so here I can just enter it as f of x because I've defined f of x as 4x plus 1 in the calculator page. So, you know, as you can see, it will come as bold when I... When I type F, can you see that? It's That means the calculator knows that there's something in the memory, so it appears as bold. So once I have entered F of X, there's my graph. But you didn't want to see the graph, you wanted to see the table of values, right? So this is, this is a good way to look at the graph and study the graph. But to get the table of values as you wanted, we're just going to go and hit menu. And here you can see table, right? Number seven, okay? And I can get a split screen table or hit command T if you're on a Mac that'll do the same thing. So I'm going to go through that menu option again. So it's menu on the graph page, okay? Table and split screen table. And there, just like that, I have all the values. These are the X values and the corresponding Y values for this particular graph. Now let me show you a cool trick, okay? If I here, if I go to the um, calculator page and if I want to update that function, let's say we just make it some quadratic function, okay? So instead of 4X, we make it 4X squared. All right, guess what? After I enter and get done, that means it's updated there on the calculator page. Watch what's happened here. Everything has changed here automatically, okay? Everything has changed here automatically. So for the value, of, when X is equal to one, the value of Y has become five. Uh, at X equals two, the value of Y has become 17, according to the way it is defined, okay? So you can just go ahead and play around with it again if you want to, okay? So this time, let's just make it something like a rational function, okay? So I'm just going to delete that, bring in, something where it's not defined, I actually wanted something like that. So let's bring an X here and let's make this an X plus one perhaps and hit done. And there, you know that the value of X is equal to zero. It should be undefined, right? And here we come and let's check it out, okay? So there you go, at X equals zero, it's undefined, right? And the graph has also been updated. So this is a really nice way. Otherwise, like I said, you, you could have also entered the graph here. Now, let's just pull this here. And one thing, let me just quickly say, you know, you can see this, borders around the table, right? That means this particular table, this window, it's a split screen window, this is active. So when I click here, that window, the graph window is active. Now, what do I mean by that is that when you are on the graph window, meaning that's active, and when you hit menu, you'll see the menu that is pertaining to the graph and hit, hit escape and come back to the table and activate the table. As you can see, when I hit menu, it's only that those options pertaining to the table, all right? That's active. So let me just show that again, okay? So when I'm on the graph window, activate the graph window, come here to the hit menu, you'll see the menu that pertains to the graph. However, when I'm on the table and I activate the table and I go to menu, you can see the menu has reduced and shrunk only to those options that pertain to the table. So when I'm on this table, I can go to the table and actually edit the table settings as I want, which means I can have the table starting at a value. I can even change the table step. 
So let's say we want the table values to start at zero and we want every 50th value, right? So, you know, this is just, you know, user defined ideas. And there you go. So at zero, it's not defined. And there you go, 50, 100, so on and so forth. Let's just go back and change the function because I think uh, the question that you said had the original uh, function 4x plus one, something like that. So I've updated it, okay? And there you go. So it's come back to those. And that's the power of, you know, the user defined. You can define the steps accordingly. Another cool thing we can do is also you can go to the table menu and um, while you're there, you know, this independent, it says auto, all right? Independent variable is the X variable, right? You can even make it ask, okay? Play around with it, okay? You'll, it's, it's self-explanatory actually. That's the cool thing about the TI Inspire, okay? So you can just play around with it and find out what happens when you press ask, okay? So independent ask, I hit okay and it actually will ask you, okay? So I can hit, any value, let's say I want to say, I want to find the Y value for a certain value like 122.3 and just hit enter and there you go. You got the Y value for a particular value of X. But I also said that there's a charm in trying and defining it here because here also, if I hit F, can you see it's bold? Because the calculator recognizes that this is in the memory, okay? So here also I can say, okay, I want for 122 point whatever, four, okay? And here we go. And that same value has been calculated according to the degree of accuracy. So if I go to my settings, which can be obtained by just pressing that uh, battery icon and document settings, here it is uh, fixed to, which means uh, two de decimal places and the calculation mode is approximate. So according to what your settings are, whatever you need, if you want 3SF, you can just go back and change that to 3SF. And if you want the exact mode, and I don't think the exact is available in the non-cast version, which you told me that you're using the non-cast version, right? So that may not be possible. However, I just thought I'll let you know that. And so if I want it in the an exact value, there you go. That's the exact value for the same thing. So I hope this has answered your question, Gregorio. If you found this video useful, Gregorio, or anyone else who's watching this video, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to see you all in the next video.